Welcome back to Basic Serials Cataloging. We are starting week four. And up until now, we've kind of been talking about serials cataloging as if you were going to do original cataloging. But probably a lot of the time, you are going to be doing copy cataloging, where you're taking a record that somebody else created and using it in your local catalog. And so this week, that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to start first by talking about how to select the appropriate record. If you're looking in a utility like OCLC Connection, or if you're downloading records from the Library of Congress, wherever you get your sources, your uh, whatever your source of records is, you need to be able to make sure that you are choosing the correct record for what you are trying to catalog. And so the issues regarding selecting the correct record that we're going to talk about th this week are deciding whether or not it is the same publication. It could be a publication that has the same title, but it's actually not the serial you want to catalog. And is the record for the same physical format? Make sure you're, you're not using the record for uh, an online journal when you really mean to use the print one, or you're not using the record for the microfilm version when you are trying to catalog a print serial. So we'll start off by talking about how to decide if the publication is in the record is the same as the publication you are working with. Um, things you can work, look for to make sure that they match are the ISSN, the International Standard Serial Number. That will be in your 022 field in a marked record. Um, of course, make sure the title and statement of responsibility match. The publisher is another thing to look for, the dates of publication. The, you could also look for an issuing body note and heading that might help you decide if you are looking at a record for the correct publication. Subject headings can help you decide. There can be publications that have the same title but are about very different topics. And sometimes the links to earlier or later publications may help you decide. This will probably be easier to understand if we're looking at an example. So here is a sample of information from the cover and the back of the cover from a serial called Critique. Critique could be a fairly common serial title, so we'll have to look at some other things. Um, notice that we have an ISSN for this. Notice that it's published in Washington, D.C. And notice the date on it. We have in hand an issue from spring of 1999. So we do a search for records, and this is the first one that comes up. Um, you'll notice that the title in the 245 field down there at the bottom, that is the same. It is critiqued, but you can't stop there. Um, one thing to notice is the ISSN in the 022 field. This is different than the ISSN for the item that we have in hand, so that's a good sign that this is actually a different item. Um, another thing that corroborates that idea is looking at the dates up in the fixed field at the top of the record. Um, it says that this publication began in 1946 and ceased in 1947, and the issue we have is from 1999. Um, that date information is also replicated in the 264 field. This was published only in 1946 and 1947, so, and the 362 field also supports that evidence. And also the subject headings, the 2650 fields, they show us that this is a serial about art, whereas the critique that we have in our hand that said that it was about fiction. So that's a good sign that this is not the appropriate record to use. So we look at a second record. Um, again, the critique title matches in the 245 field. Let's look up at the dates in the fixed field. This one started in 1973 and is still being published, so our 1999 issue could fit in here. Um, but again, look at the 022 field. The ISSN is not the same number as the one for our item, so that is a big red flag. Also in the 264 field, this is published in Glasgow, and ours was published in Washington, D.C., so that is another sign. This is not the correct record. Again, our date range in the 362 is okay, but also look at the subject headings. This is about socialism and about the Soviet Union. Again, not about fiction, so this is also not the appropriate record to use. So then we come to record three. Um, you look at, again, the dates in the fixed field. This one started in 1956, and the 9999 means it's still going. So again, our 1999 issue could work. We look at the 022 field, and this is the first one we've seen that has the correct ISSN number. So that's a good sign. As with all these, critique is in the 245. That matches. Now we see in the first 264 field that this was published in Minneapolis, which didn't match what we have on hand, 
But then you'll see a second 264 field that says that later on the publisher switched to Helder Publications in Washington, D.C., which is what is on the 1999 issue we're looking at. Um, and then later in the record there is a note explaining that from 1982 on, this publication was published by Heldrick Publications in Washington, D.C. So that matches. And then we look at our subject headings. 650, we have fiction, history, and criticism. And that matches with what the information on the cover says this serial is about. So this is the appropriate record to use for copy cataloging. So once you've determined that you have the correct publication, the next thing to look for is whether or not this item is, this record is for the same physical format that you have. Um, things to look at include the form code in the fixed field. We'll look at some examples of that. The content, media, and carrier type, which are fields that we looked at earlier in the class. Those help you decide what type of item it is. Um, there'll usually be some information in the 300 field that you can use. And especially if you're dealing with um, electronic items, online things, you might see an 856 field, which is where the link for the URL to access it online goes. So if it has one of those, it may not be a print item. So again, let's look at an example. We're dealing with Vanity Fair, and we have the print version that we would like to catalog. So we do a search, and this is the first record we come up with. Um, notice at the top, the element in the fixed field called form is highlighted, um, and that has the code A. And if you look that up on the OCLC Bibliographic Formats and Standards website, you will see that code A stands for microform. So that's a giveaway that this is not a print item. Um, down in the body of the record, you'll see that there is an 007 field, and we didn't talk about that in detail because we're not, we're mostly working with print resources in this class, but an 007 usually is a giveaway that this is not a print item. And then you'll see in the second half of the record, it has the 336, 337, and 338 fields for content, media, and carrier type, and these tell us that it is a microfilm cartridge, and this is um, corroborated by the 533 field that tells you that this is a microfilm item, so it's not the correct record that we should use. On the other hand, we find a second record, and up in the fixed field, the form element is blank, which if you look it up in OCLC's bibliographic formats and standards, that means this is a print item. And then we will also see the 336, 337, and 338 fields that tell us that this is a text item that you can hold in your hand in volumes. So this is the correct record to use. So deciding whether you are looking at the same publication and whether you're looking at the right physical format are the things to look at when you're choosing a record for copy cataloging.